Thank you very much, Joachim. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, uh, thank Professor Berg and the organizing committee for inviting me at this outstanding meeting. And I will try to be as short as possible because we are out of time. Um, at the beginning, the systemic uh, to pulmonary artery shunt procedure was designed to assume that the oxygenation of the patient will be adequate, will allow the harmonious growth of the pulmonary arteries, will provide uh, no excessive pulmonary blood flow, will be not uh, in um, connection with congestive heart failure, and of course will not uh, um, promote uh, pulmonary vascular disease. Going back to history, uh, the first uh, successful um, uh, story was uh, with a, a blue uh, baby operation performed uh, in 1994 from uh, Bellop and published uh, first in uh, 1995. And um, they considered at that time that the three cases that uh, have been survived and uh, definitely clinical improvement deserve to be published. This is what is written in the article. What everybody uh, knows more or less is that uh, the first case was done with the anastomosis between the left pulmonary, uh, left uh, subclavian artery and the left pulmonary artery. But in the uh, next uh, two cases, um, they uh, did um, just uh, another kind of technique. So they um, would go with the thoracotomy on the opposite side of the aortic arch. This is uh, uh, here, um, uh, left, uh, um, uh, here, sorry. It's a, a right aortic arch and uh, they uh, just uh, disconnect the innominate artery from the uh, carotid and the subclavian artery and the anastomosis to the left pulmonary artery because they remarked that the subclavian artery is making to an uh, acute angle and they want to um, um, prevent this. Anyway, um, the, nowadays we um, know uh, that uh, the classic bariatrosis shunt that is not anymore in use was performed with a thoracotomy approach opposite on the aortic side. Regarding the size, uh, the pulmonary blood flow was depending on the size of the subclavian artery. The length, of course, depending on the pulmonary artery. Sometimes uh, uh, the pulmonary artery was uh, um, pulled uh, up in the kink because uh, the subclavian artery was too short. And uh, location was, of course, uh, extrapericardial with the uh, anti-side anastomosis. Of course, it was very important that this shunt uh, promote uh, uh, growth and uh, has a growth potential because we don't have to forget at that time the heart lung machine was not being invented and uh, some uh, people that uh, think that uh, this will be the definitive uh, palliation for these uh, patients. One year later, in uh, 1946, Potts um, uh, described uh, his uh, um, approach with uh, left thoracotomy and making the anastomosis between uh, the descending um, aorta and the left pulmonary artery by designing a special crime to um, avoid the um, uh, paraplegia when uh, he claimed the descending uh, aorta. In this uh, situation, um, the size of the shunt could be uh, either uh, too small and the patient remains cyanotic or uh, too big, the uh, patient uh, getting uh, heart uh, failure. And uh, the length of the shunt was just a direct uh, anastomosis, very difficult to close uh, during uh, the uh, second uh, procedure with high risk uh, for um, uh, air embolism. After that uh, was uh, the attempt of uh, Waterston uh, to make a direct anastomosis between the uh, aorta and the pulmonary artery with a right thoracotomy approach. Uh, the approach was uh, um, uh, behind the, the superior um, uh, vena cava that you can see uh, also here. The same problem with the direct anastomosis between the aorta and the pulmonary artery, so the flow cannot be really um, controlled because it would be also very too small or um, uh, too large and uh, the patient had the uh, problem in both uh, ways. A few years uh, later, Cooley um, uh, described uh, the same approach, this time uh, just making the anastomosis inside the uh, pericardium. Uh, just in front of the uh, superior um, uh, vena cava with the same advantages and disadvantages like the Waterston uh, shunt. In 1962 uh, was a very um, uh, good uh, time for a new concept uh, of uh, Schumacher uh, promoted uh, the direct anastomosis of the um, branch of the pulmonary artery to the ascending aorta or with an intraspose of uh, prosthesis. And basically, this is the origin of what we know today as the Melbourne approach. So uh, quite uh, uh, um, back in time, in uh, 1962, was the concept already um, uh, promoted. So we have to know a bit about the history that sometimes good ideas are coming to light uh, many years later. The same principle was applied by Redo and Ecker uh, in uh, 1963, so one year thereafter, when they uh, considered to just put a, a prosthesis between uh, the ascending aorta and the central pulmonary artery. And in this situation, they get uh, the advantage that uh, they have used different sizes of Teflon prosthesis with a variable length. 
and of course with the location intrapericardial that uh, have a little bit uh, more uh, adaptability of uh, this uh, shunt can be a little bit more adapted for uh, specific uh, uh, patients. Another improvement uh, was uh, done in 1976 by uh, Gataniga when um, with a new technology of uh, PTFA shunts, uh, he uh, promoted the central um, connection between the uh, sending aorta and uh, the pulmonary artery, exactly like um, uh, Redo Ecker did uh, some years before. And uh, now this is uh, what uh, was uh, um, basically um, uh, established at the uh, central side side, the orthogorotex central shunt um, was uh, first published in 1998 by uh, Gates. With, of course, with uh, the same uh, uh, advantages, different size of um, uh, prosthesis, um, variable uh, length, and uh, intrapericardial approach that uh, could be uh, very convenient for the next um, uh, surgeries. One very important thing, I don't know uh, how many from the audience already um, know this, it's uh, that in uh, 1962, the Munich uh, Clinic um, just uh, uh, make a, a very interesting uh, study with uh, um, uh, quite a lot of uh, patients where uh, they make an anastomosis between the subclavian artery and the uh, um, ipsilateral uh, pulmonary artery using the Dacron uh, prosthesis. They entitled their um, um, work uh, like an anastomosis between the um, uh, systemic and uh, pulmonary artery with uh, um, a prosthesis, but this is uh, what uh, uh, later on the uh, Duval uh, in um, uh, his uh, work promoted like a modified uh, BT shunt. So basically, I think uh, this shunt that is uh, wide uh, um, used today is coming from Germany and the cleaner was the, uh, promoting and uh, um, just uh, did the first time. I think it's a pity that we don't pay credit to the really uh, people that really uh, make a difference uh, in um, congenital heart um, history. And also they uh, use uh, first uh, the uh, Dacron um, prosthesis that you can see the table, very detailed how, uh, how long was the prosthesis, what kind of prosthesis, from where to where was put. So uh, just uh, a very detailed uh, work with very good results for the, um, that uh, time. So uh, going uh, b uh, back in history, but uh, only 20 years after uh, the, uh, this uh, publication, uh, Delval um, uh, also um, mentioned that uh, um, uh, Cleaner did the first uh, time this uh, um, uh, type of shunt. And also um, they, um, uh, he said that uh, the Cleaner insisted that the prosthesis should not be wider than the subclavian artery because of the risk of thrombosis, and therefore they used only uh, five to 10 millimeters um, uh, prosthesis. However, uh, in his article in uh, 1981, uh, when he promoted the modified blood rotas in shunt without giving the name of a clipper, uh, he um, said that um, uh, he put, just contrary to the um, original uh, article, a prosthesis of greater diameter of the subclavian artery, suturing the side of the undivided subclavian artery and should theoretically increase with growth. 20 years later, in 2006, in the uh, surgery for congenital heart uh, defects, he mentioned uh, that initially a graft of expanded poly, um, PTFF was anastomosis side to side to undivided subclavian artery, even though it was not the true, because at the beginning in his experience, he also used the Dacron graft and not the PTFF graft. However, he was right when he said that this assumption with the uh, flow will be limited by the diameter of the subclavian artery and the flow would increase with growth was never been demonstrated. So uh, we can help hope, but reality sometimes is very different from our hopes. So um, what we use today is uh, basically more or less uh, or more frequent uh, median sternotomy, at, uh, putting a, a Gore-Tex uh, shunt between the innominate um, artery uh, from the midline, um, just um, connecting the innominate artery uh, to the um, right pulmonary artery or to the main pulmonary artery, or from the sides connecting the um, subclavian artery to the right or to the left pulmonary artery with uh, um, variable uh, length and the different sizes of the uh, prosthesis. I selected two studies that um, deal with um, uh, influence of the insertion uh, site of the systemic pulmonary um, uh, shunts uh, concerning the growth of the pulmonary arteries. And this study is coming from uh, uh, United States uh, with um, uh, quite a big number of patients, 101 um, patients, when uh, they uh, try to uh, determine if it's any kind of influence if you put the shunt on the right pulmonary artery or on the main pulmonary artery and if the uh, antigrade flow is still open or not. And they, by multiple regression analysis, they uh, showed that the absence of antigrade flow in the presence of the right side is shunts were statistically significant predictors of small of pulmonary artery and size discrepancy between right and left pulmonary artery. So they suggested that in the absence of the antigrade pulmonary blood flow, a modified BT shunt to be put on the main pulmonary artery because it will promote more uniform branch pulmonary artery growth. 
Another study that's coming from Munich was published uh, at the, um, the beginning of this um, year uh, was uh, um, dealing uh, with uh, um, uh, reason for failure of the system to pulmonary artery um, uh, shunts in uh, neonates, also uh, depending on the uh, location and size of the shunt. And uh, they concluded that among uh, any, any, uh, other factors, the central shunt and the three millimeter shunt size uh, are risk factors for shunt failure. That's why they recommended strongly the implantation modified BT shunt for at least 3.5 millimeter in, um, in neonates. So uh, a lot of people are making concern about uh, size, um, length of uh, location, because uh, there are many variables that you have to take into consideration that after surgery you will get um, a stable uh, patient. That's why I personally don't like shunts because they are associated with the palliation concept and also with the instability that can um, uh, happen during uh, this uh, time when the patient is uh, with a uh, shunt depending uh, pulmonary uh, circulation. Anyway, we still have a lot of um, uh, patients that can be um, summarized in this category, patients with single ventricular physiology and patients with biventricular physiology. In the first category, we can put um, a patient with the antegrade pulmonary blood flow, with diminished antegrade pulmonary flow, or no antegrade pulmonary flow when the uh, pulmonary um, vascularization is depending from ductal or from MAPCAS. And the biventricular physiology with uh, diminished antegrade pulmonary blood flow or no at all, antegrade pulmonary blood flow, just MAPCA uh, dependent. I have some example for um, uh, each uh, patient in these um, categories. This, um, uh, the first category is uh, typically uh, illustrated by uh, NORD um, patients, in this case, uh, 2.8 uh, kilo uh, patient with a le uh, left fibroplastic heart syndrome with a um, uh, total anomalous pulmonary vein disconnection of supracardiac type with stenosis uh, of the uh, vertical uh, vein. You can see in a very nice condition uh, coming uh, in an emergency basis in the, in the hospital. And uh, um, surgery has to be uh, done uh, immediately. Um, you can see uh, here, uh, so I just opened the thorax just um, uh, before uh, um, open the pericardium. The innominate artery was uh, exposed and uh, into um, and side anastomosis with a 3.5 millimeter shunt was uh, performed. It's very important to keep more or less a 90 um, grade there. After bicapital cannulation, the um, vertical vein is uh, um, ligated. Here you can see the uh, common sinus and the opening of the right uh, atrium and uh, the opening of the sinus there. With the situless technique, the um, uh, connection between the common, um, uh, common collector from the pulmonary veins with uh, enlarging with the pericardial patch um, in the, to the right atrium just to ensure an obstructive uh, connection. After that, just typical normal procedure with a bifurcation uh, plastic with a um, uh, pericardial patch, connection from lateral with the uh, ascending, mini ascending aorta in the pulmonary artery and uh, with the uh, enlargement of the descending aortic arch with the um, uh, bone and pericardium uh, patch. And after that, uh, with a beating heart, anastomosis with a 3.5 millimeter shunt to the right um, uh, pulmonary artery. It's very important that at the end of surgery, in my opinion, the shunt has to make a very nice curve and uh, the origin of the, uh, from the um, brachioencephalic um, uh, um, uh, trunk has to be uh, very smooth and not in an acute angle, but a no, uh, 90 degree at least um, uh, angle there. And uh, this is uh, the, how the X-ray was um, looking um, before and uh, after surgery. So uh, I think uh, the patient um, had uh, a benefit uh, um, regarding this. Next patient with a single ventricle physiology with diminished antegrade pulmonary blood flow was a tricuspid atresia in uh, free uh, kilokin with hypoplastic right ventricle the TGA, VSD, ASD, and with a severe uh, subvalvular and valvular pulmonary stenosis. In this case, uh, even though it was uh, three um, uh, kilo, uh, I just put a three millimeter shunt uh, from the um, uh, brachiocephalic artery to the right pulmonary artery just to make a, a balanced circulation between the pulmonary and the systemic um, uh, circulation. In this uh, case, with a single ventricle physiology with no antegrade pulmonary blood flow, in a case of uh, dextrocardia, um, right isomerism, asplenia, single ventricle, ASD, right uh, persistent uh, superior vena cava, pulmonary atresia, and MAPCAS dependent pulmonary circulation that you can uh, see here with uh, a high stenosis on the left side of the left uh, pulmonary artery in origin. Um, I uh, just make the uh, unifocalization between the uh, two pulmonary arteries, and even though it was 3.5 kilo, I put a four millimeter um, uh, shunt, and uh, after that uh, was able to um, receive the cava pulmonary connection and uh, the Fontan uh, completion at the age of um, uh, three years old. Of course, we also have a patient with a two-ventricular physiology that we try to correct uh, from the beginning, but sometimes uh, this is uh, not um, uh, always uh, possible. It's a, a severe uh, dwarf patient, a uh, three kilo um, um, of 
uh, weight with severe subvalvular valvular and supravalvular pulmonary stenosis with left persistent superior vena cava and uh, PFO with um, stenosis of the origin of the left pulmonary artery. And uh, um, I did first uh, the uh, three millimeter uh, shunt, just an adjunction for um, increasing the saturation and the, the enlargement of the origin of the left pulmonary artery with um, autologous pericardius, and two weeks ago, I just made the uh, correction and uh, succeed to um, uh, dilate intraoperatively the pulmonary artery, just uh, increase the diameter of the outflow tract and the main pulmonary trunk, and so uh, the patient uh, will uh, have a great benefit because the pulmonary artery is still working and uh, inflate. And of course, we have the complex patient with the biventricular physiology with no anti pulmonary uh, blood flow, the pulmonary artery being uh, supported with a, a MAPCA, like in this uh, patient. I think um, it's very important uh, that um, the uh, angio before um, uh, surgery has to be um, very precisely just to evaluate not only uh, where the MAPCAS and the double supply uh, is uh, provided, but also how is the anatomy on the periphery. And you can see here, unfortunately, there are a lot of uh, peripheral um, um, stenosis. Uh, and uh, even though in this situation, because I uh, like to make only focalization with complete correction, I decided to make only focalization to put a, a, a shunt first and then optimizing with uh, um, interventional um, catheterization from the distal uh, pulmonary artery and after that making the correction. And this is how uh, it was uh, looking uh, in surgery. So median uh, sternotomy uh, head um, uh, uh, foot here. The um, mapcas are identified and uh, um, with the uh, loops um, uh, secured there. In this case, was also um, uh, a mapca that was uh, coming behind the esophagus, as you can see here, was mobilizing behind the esophagus from both sides and then was interrupted on the uh, side of the descending uh, um, aorta. The next step was to uh, reconstruct the uh, central portion of the pulmonary uh, artery, just uh, suturing together all the mapcas. Uh, so uh, the um, uh, posterior wall was made from the mapcas um, um, uh, wall, and the anterior uh, reconstruction of the pulmonary artery was done with a, a native uh, pericardium, as you can um, uh, see here. The whole surgery was done on the beating heart, and uh, at, le uh, at the end, a uh, five millimeter shunt was um, uh, anastomosis to the uh, pulmonary artery, to the um, you nominate the uh, uh, artery and then the distal uh, part to the um, pulmonary, right pulmonary artery. At, at the end, uh, the patient um, achieved a very uh, good saturation and uh, was in a stable um, uh, condition. The angio that we perform uh, thereafter in compare with the um, uh, mapcas that you can see here, this is uh, the angio uh, performed over the um, uh, shunt and we all the, almost all the um, uh, collaterals that have been anastomosized and uh, this is also um, performed uh, and uh, the results after the peripheral um, dilatation of the um, collaterals that previous have been uh, stenosed in many uh, situations. After uh, three years, the patient uh, was uh, corrected uh, with uh, fenestrated VSD and the, the um, uh, right ventricle pressure is about uh, two-third um, uh, systemic uh, pressure. Um, in conclusion, uh, nowadays the modified uh, barrel tossing uh, shunt and the central PTFF shunt are the most uh, used systemic to pulmonary um, shunt um, uh, in the current practice. And uh, the size of the graft uh, is the depending on uh, patient weight, length uh, of the graft, location, size of the pulmonary arteries, estimated time until next uh, surgery procedure. As you can see in the same neonase that was um, weighting oh, more or less uh, uh, three kilo, I did a three uh, um, millimeter shunt, a 3.5 or a five or a four millimeter shunt depending on the uh, underlying uh, pathology. Uh, whenever it's possible, uh, try to avoid an, um, a central shunt. Of course, uh, um, uh, it's not uh, only uh, the, the case. Uh, and uh, the distal connection, whenever possible, try to put it on the main um, uh, pulmonary artery. As a take home um, uh, message, uh, I think um, despite our progress, a patient who needs a stunt is still uh, nowadays um, a challenge. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.